Hello everybody, this is Inglorious P back with another video today and today I wanted to give my recap um, because some of my opinions have changed uh, based on the last card show I went to locally here in Texas. Um, like I said, my opinions kind of changed and I, I I think we're seeing a, a, a movement in the market. Um, do I think it's positive or negative? I think you'll have to watch the video and find out. So before I get into it, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit me up on Instagram if you ever want to buy, sell, or trade. I'm still looking for 2012 Prism basketball cards. If you have any, hit me up. As well as hit me up on eBay if you ever want to just buy something from me. Um, my link will be in the description below. But let's kind of dive into it. So here's my five points from the card show that I went to um, here locally. And the reason I like local shows more than anything is it gives me the vibe of what's really going on, not just with cards, not with just collectibles even, just the economy and as a whole, right? People open up to you, they tell you about what's going on, you hear local news, you hear, you know, are people struggling? Is there cash everywhere? Because if there's cash everywhere at a local show, then there's more than likely going to be cash everywhere at a bigger show. So... That's the way I kind of play it. Um, I talk to a lot of people. I talk to buyers and sellers. I know a lot of people at this point. And, um, you know, I, I get people messaging me. I get people to, to hit me up all the time. So here's point number one. Sellers are now open to taking some losses. Now, I think I told you all the story before where I was trying to buy a Kevin Porter Jr. card. I was willing to pay full comps for this card and the seller didn't budge <laughs> and it was really frustrating and the reasoning was well I just can't take a loss on this I paid way higher than what you know comps are and it's like okay well we'll just never sell the card then because it's not going back up <laughs> you know unless that player really takes off um and if you're willing to take that bet take that bet but most cards you know we're, we're not seeing the market return and I think a lot of sellers are starting to get that right and I think that's a sign of people are needing cash. And we'll kind of we'll kind of get to that later on, but I think that dam is kind of breaking. I think there's cracks in the hole for sellers to start taking some losses. Are they taking extreme ones? No, but I had multiple sellers at the last show I went to and it wasn't very big say, "Oh, man, I'm into this card for like 80 bucks. Can you get to 50, 60 for me?" You know, they're open to taking losses. The major ones, not yet. They're not primed for that yet. But they're open to taking them at this point. Now, understand that that has a negative effect on the market because there are a lot of highly leveraged assets out there. If the if those assets start to sell, um, I think you're going to see, you know, prices drop even farther, right? So you want to be ahead of this. Now, that's my opinion. You guys might disagree. Comment below, um, you know, on stuff that you bought in higher on. Are you taking losses on it? Or are you just saying, ah, I'm just going to keep this card now? Like, what, what are you doing with stuff that you took losses on? Try to trade them. You sell them. You, what, what do you do? I'm just curious. Um, but again, I think that's going to affect the market. Think about all the stuff on those auction houses, PWCC and Golden. Think about all the stuff on eBay even, ComC. The people listed six months ago, and they haven't sold, right? And they haven't made any moves with them yet. Um, and if they look to start making move, uh, you know, clearing out collections and taking losses, that's more stuff on the market that's fairly priced that'll drive prices down. Um, I think that it'll actually also help the market though with liquidity, right? It'll help. I, I, in some ways, actually rejuvenate the market a bit, potentially. Um, because if people are selling and they make sales, even if it's as a loss, they now have that money in their pocket they can reinvest in, right? So that can help the market build up. But what we have to do at a certain point is will, be willing to take those losses, and it's going to sting. Cards will drop another you know, certain percentage. But once we hit that bottom, that's when we buy, right? And I've been telling people this. I'm not buying yet. Right, I'm getting more aggressive with my plays, but I'm not buying yet. Like, uh, you know, completely, I'm not completely buying in yet. Um, I'm waiting for that dam to break, and then we buy. And I think we're starting to see it. Number two, 
spine graded non gem is dead. I've been saying this. I said it a year ago, year and a half ago. Your non gem cards, good luck selling. <laughs> now, if it's an out of five card, of course, like there's only five of them, people will want it. But your silver prism, Trey Young PSA nine, good luck selling. Um, there are people that want to flip it, right? They see the comp is you know a hundred bucks or whatever it is. They'll give you 60, 70 bucks as with any kind of more liquid player. But I guess the point I'm making is it, it's don't expect your non-gem cards to be, you know, seen by many people, right? That's not what people want. Um, and really, I'm cleaning out my collection of anything that's not gem or extremely rare like that, that it really doesn't matter. You know, that's I'm not buying that stuff. <laughs> Um, even if players I PC, I'm not buying non-gem cards. Um, I'll just crack them out and put them in, you know, top loaders or whatever. So, um, I think you're continuing to see it. A lot of sellers, um, mentioned that to me that, that, you know, people are really just after the gem mint cards. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, uh, what's it called when you like talk yourself into believing something? Maybe it's that. Maybe you guys comment below. Uh, do you disagree with that, with that take? Number three. Sellers are struggling to sell. And it continues. Um, this has not changed. And we're and we're seeing a lot of sellers get more desperate. Um, they made some moves, even with involving myself, that I was like, okay, if you want to do this, that's fine. Um, but I think people are looking for that spark, and they're not going to find it. But they're looking for it. And a lot of sellers told me, you know, hey, I'm not, I haven't sold anything. People are just wanting to trade with me right? Um, the show was actually pretty busy. It was about as busy as normal, maybe a little, a little more busier. Um, there's still interest in the hobby, guys. There's still a lot of people looking to get in. I'm encouraged by the amount of kids. Um, I'm even seeing a lot of, um, or not a lot, but more females involved. So there's people interested, but buying is tough. And this kind of runs in number four. There's limited cash available. As I mentioned before, there's a bunch of assets that people are into high that they don't really necessarily want to sell because they're going to be taking a loss <laughs> right on the chin. And um, I think you're start, you've seen these sellers, you know, struggle to sell unless their stuff is priced adequately, right? If it's priced adequately, adequately, you know, you're you're still you're still struggling a bit, but you're moving a bit more. Um, but the market's not what it was. You know, not every card on your table is going to sell. There's very few people now that are going to walk up to your table and buy everything out. I remember at the peak, people were just buying out tables for thousands of dollars. That's kind of gone away. So you got to get more creative. You got to have stuff that's going to pull people in, but also be sellable. Um, it's a tough It's a tough line to, to toe. Number five, raw is hot. Um, that's all that people are looking for. They look through it in the boxes. If you're ever in a trade with someone... I'm seeing people go after the raw cards overgraded, and here's why. They believe, especially if they believe it's going to gem, you know, let's say your raw card is 30 bucks, and there's a graded card for 100 so you got to trade them three, four raw cards for that one graded. If any of those raw cards hit as 10s or gems with whatever, you know, that, that one card is 100 bucks plus they have all the extras, Right? So raw is hot. It continues to be. Um, it's an interesting phenomenon. Um, so yeah, I'm just curious to see how that goes. But raw is hot. Um, so that's kind of the updates. That's my takes on the market. Now that I've actually experienced another card show. Um, to kind of recap, again, raw cards continue to be hot. There's limited cash. People are struggling to sell. But it's still a lot of trade volume. There's still a lot of interest in the market. Um, non-gem cards are tough. Uh, I'm speaking more ultra-modern when I say that. Obviously, vintage cards are different. I'm talking more modern. Um, and sellers are open to taking some losses. So that's a positive. It's going to cause the market... Overall, I think we're going to see the market downtrend another, you know, 30 50%. But from there, we will recover. Um, and I think with that increased liquidity, move money moving again... You might see a rebound, especially heading into 2024 with Fanatics. Um, this next year might be a bit tough. But I think after that, we've got some positives. At, at least in my eyes, you know, 
in a positive light. So I'll see you all in the next video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Again, eBay link in the description. Hit me up on Instagram. I'll see you all later. Peace.